I gotta be honest with you guys. Being alone sucks. I'm not gonna lie when I say I've had days where I thought no one would understand what I'm going through mentally or emotionally. But while there were times where I know I've got it under control, that I got it handled on my end, I knew a number of people who were beaten down by society in the form of exams or relationships or fearing they would be judged by other people about their interests or hobbies. Hell, the funnels were going on in my old high school just recently, so I can guarantee you there was just nothing but panic and angst filling the air from the majority of people. After just coming out of a very social-heavy environment, I could safely say that social anxiety is more common than people think. It's not a good thing, but sometimes we just don't know what to do or what to think about when we're in that spot. Well, I'm here to say that there is a film that covers that, and it's the latest film in a legendary catalog that speaks to all walks of life. Let's see how this one speaks to the introverts here in the latest edition of the Studio Ghibli Project, and for now, the final episode, episode 22, When Marnie Was There. The movie follows a 12-year-old girl named Anna. After collapsing from an asthma attack, she was sent by her parents to live in a rural seaside town with her relatives, and while taking in the lush scenery of the area, she becomes infatuated by an old house across a salt marsh where she meets a girl named Marnie. But while she forms a strong bond with her, she starts noticing that something is off about both Marnie and the mansion she lives in, and she not only finds her peace of mind emotionally and mentally, but also discovers Marnie may have closer ties to Anna than we previously thought. The announcement for this film's release in December of 2013 has been the latest in a very wild series of events surrounding the studio, from the release of what we all thought was Miyazaki's last film, The Wind Rises, to his retirement, and finally the release of Isao Takahata's swan song, The Tale of the Princess Kaguya, leaving Ghibli's future up in the air once again, but little did people know, the face of Studio Ghibli will change forever the following year with a couple huge events. In March of that year, Ghibli's longtime producer Toshio Suzuki announces his retirement as he'll take the role as general manager while Yoshiaki Nishimura took his place. He produced not only this movie but also Kakuya. But even that would change on August 3rd when Suzuki announced the studio will restructure themselves in the wake of Miyazaki's retirement which led to wide speculation that Ghibli was shutting down their feature film department and only make short films for the Ghibli Museum. In response to this, Miyazaki had to make his own statement saying that wasn't his intention when he retired, and the two rising stars within the studio that also worked on this film, Nishimura and the director, Hiromasa Yonobayashi, left the studio shortly after they came back from the Academy Awards in early 2015 to form Studio Panic in April, where they would come out, as of the making of this video, with two films, Mary and the Witch's Flower in 2017, and an anthology film called Modest Heroes. As for the film itself, it was based on the children's novel of the same name by Joan G. Robinson, a novel that Ghibli got the rights to back in 2012, and is one of the many books that Miyazaki is a fan of reading, is a fan of the book. It was adapted only once before in the long-running BBC series Jack and Ori back in 1971, which, for people who don't know, is a series where children's books were read by numerous celebrities and was on air for over 30 years, it became a pop culture phenomenon over in the UK. After the movie came out in theater, it doubled its budget with around $36 million US, including $561,000 in the three months it was in North America, and ended with another Oscar nod for Ghibli, and they lost in the most Pixar way possible by giving themselves the award. And the Oscar goes to... Inside Out, Pete Dr. Jonas Rivera. But regardless of how the results were here in the West, even if the future for both Yonabayashi and Nishimura was kind of blurry in the long run, it was still a very beneficial experience for both of them, and makes me very grateful this happened after finding out Yonabayashi almost didn't even direct the film at all. 
He said in an interview he initially turned it down because he didn't know how to adapt it at first, but later took it after he thought of some scenes that would flow with the story in the film that weren't in the book. The pacing was excellent, the storytelling was fantastic, and the plot itself is incredible. The two characters that really have any meaningful substance is, of course, Anna and Marnie because they overall feed off of each other. Anna learns while hanging out with Marnie that she has value in the world and that she isn't abandoned by life, changing her from the person she was back in school where she wouldn't talk to anyone, while Marnie, while hanging out with Anna, learns that she shouldn't give up hope in what she wants to do and that she should let the pain she has inside out from something I can't say because that's spoilery reasons. Kind of the same thing as my last review in a way when I reviewed Your Name. We care about them and their mental development because they care about each other. Also, going back to things I didn't catch when I watched this the first time, I kept hearing from people that there were some lesbian undertones in this due to a couple of scenes with Anna and Marty together. The fact that Anna has short hair, apparently, and the ending of the movie, which I'm not going to say, but for anyone who's seen it, you exactly know why this is an issue. I, I didn't really catch it the first time. I did watch it again just to see what people are talking about, and I, I saw what they were talking about, but to me, it just looked like a case of uh, something lost in translation. I mean, it could have been interpreted either way, honestly. It could be lesbian undertones, or it couldn't be, but for the sake of my sanity, because I've watched this movie enough to know what happens in the ending, I'm calling it something that was lost in translation, because I really don't want to think about this anymore, because this is already burning my brain from the inside. Let's move on. Honestly, there's nothing I can really say about the animation that hasn't been said already when it comes to Ghibli films. It, overall, it was top notch, mainly in the character's body language, especially around the time when Anna started living in that seaside town. How she starts to act and speak in the first few scenes she's there with new people she's never met before is very effective. It made me recall back to the days where I was forced to make friends with people either I didn't know or I didn't like, and that feeling is portrayed beautifully here. Making his anime film debut on the soundtrack is piano composer Takatsugu Minamatsu, who would later make the soundtracks for a couple of more films, one of them being Mary and the Witch's Flower, and the, kind of the same thing with the animation, only it's a different person. The music blends in very well with the atmosphere and mood of the film. I can't honestly remember a bad soundtrack in any Ghibli film, I gotta be honest with you. But when it comes to the music, the thing I want to highlight the most is the ending song, Fine on the Outside, by Priscilla Ahn and the story around it. According to her personal blog, she wrote the song in 2005, but didn't release it because she thought it was too personal to be released to the public. But when she found out Ghibli's next film, was going to be about the book when Marnie was there, she became curious and read the novel, which in turn gave her the confidence to send the studio the song, and their response was they thought the song was perfect. This is a match made by fate, in my opinion, because the show and the song are perfect parallels in terms of what message is being conveyed from them, which is why it perfectly complements the overall mood of the movie even when it's played at the ending while the credits are rolling. The opportunity she got with this song stayed with her so much, she also made an album called Just Know That I Love You with music that was inspired by the movie. It's basically a conceptual like album version of the story of the movie and released it in the same day as the actual soundtrack. The only place where I can find these are in iTunes if you want to listen to either one, although I highly suggest you watch the film before you listen to Priscilla Ahn's album. I suggest you watch the subtitled version, but I don't blame you if you want to watch the dub. One, because it's Ghibli, so it's better than usual. And two, in interviews about the film, two voice actresses who are familiar with Ghibli's work, Gina Davis and Kathy Bates, two very well-respected actresses in their own right, while talking about this movie, started to feel emotional and a apparently broke down while talking about the film. This is according to the Blu-ray interviews when you get the Blu-ray for the movie. If this film could emotionally affect two very talented, well-respected actresses who have had to play numerous roles as many different people throughout their career, it automatically gives the film another layer of authenticity in its message. Just like with everything I watch, I do a pretty good job of keeping myself blind as to what the show or movie is about and people's reaction from it. So when I was researching info about this film, I saw people say that 
this was their new favorite Ghibli film, which confused me at first because I looked at what people were talking about it shortly after my first viewing of the film. But after watching it again and sitting with what I was reading after a couple of days, I started to realize the reason was very clear. While some of the most iconic Studio Ghibli films have been known to take you into their worlds, with this one, it's the other way around, where the film has this internal connection with your emotions, even if you feel like you've grown out of some of them. Instead of a uh, Miyazaki film like Spirited Away, where you're taken into this world uh, in the bathhouse, this movie and the animation, the story, everything, it jumps into your worldview because it touches on things that you feel and it touches on emotions that resonate with you the most without really any sense of like a pure fantasy film this is magical realism in short this film is for all the introverts out there for anyone who thinks that no one will understand their loneliness and that no one really knows what they're going through behind closed doors because they don't talk to anyone if there is anyone out there who has been feeling this way or maybe you're feeling this way right now watching this video as a way to fight off boredom while you should be doing something i don't know like homework if you're one of these people please watch this movie let this movie be a reminder that there will always be someone who will understand you even when you think they don't it could be a family member it could be a teacher it could be someone you talk to every day whether it's in person or online Take it from a fellow introvert, and believe me, when I say you'll think about the people around you differently after watching this film. As for me, I absolutely enjoyed this film, and I'm gonna give When Marty Was There a 9 out of 10. Holy shit. This is kind of hard to believe, honestly. Um, first off, thank you for watching this video uh, for When Marty Was There. If you like this video, hit the like button down below. If you like this movie, hit the like button down below. Of course, all, all that subscribe, check the videos. I just want to have a, a quick second to really reflect on what the hell I just finished. I remember having this idea to make a video series where I reviewed every single Studio Ghibli film. Never did I think I was actually going to finish it, even though I kept working. It was one of those things, like I wanted to work on it forever, but you know, all good things have to come to an end, and well, I guess this is it. So... I guess uh, in a way for me to celebrate, <laughs> in a way for me to celebrate this, uh, I'm going to be linking the entire, basically the entire Studio Ghibli playlist because that was the thing I did when I started this channel. I just made a playlist out of all the studios that made all these shows. I thought it was a good idea. Now I'm going to post one of them in the description. Uh, it's every video that I've made of every Studio Ghibli film. going to see me from the lowest of quality up to where I am now when I'm not even showing my face. It is a very amazing feeling knowing that I finished this. Uh, and also another thing, I'm just going to go through this really quickly. I saw after I reviewed Your Name, I hit 100 subscribers, so... Hell yeah, I'm absolutely excited for that. Thank you to everyone who has watched basically any of my videos and watched me progress into making better quality videos, honestly. Uh, it's hard to believe I'm where I am today because I watch YouTube all the time. I watch people with hundreds of thousands of subscribers and it's a different feeling when you see that something that you made has 100 subscribers compared to like someone else who's already reached way past that. So yeah, again... Thank you to everyone who has watched my stuff over the past almost two years, and I can't wait to see what's in store. And with that, my name is Payne, and uh, I'll see you in the next video.